Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Today is a lovely Sunday, particularly. I mean, it's a beautiful day outside. Blue skies, kind of cool, all those kinds of things. But also a couple other things which are really interesting and are worth talking about. So next Sunday is the day that we celebrate Ascension. And by we, I'm using this kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit flexible because in certain parts of the world, Ascension is celebrated on its day, which is Thursday. And by certain parts of the world, I don't mean like very distant parts, I mean other parts of America. So what ends up happening at the church is that people come looking for like a holy day of obligation mass is like, oh no, we don't do Ascension here this day, it's on Sunday. And so like kind of what gives. The, <clears throat> all of that is kind of fun and interesting, but also there's a longstanding uh, tradition uh, is this kind of one of the more beautiful things and something I really, really love of the rogation days before it. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are days that in the medieval period, especially became the days where it would became a, a thing to, uh, it's called to beat the bounds, which is essentially making a walk around the entire boundary of the parish, which, um, is the entirety of Summit and Wasatch counties back over here. That's like 10,000 square miles. <laughs> uh, I will not be doing that. <laughs> and it would take significantly longer than three days to, to hike the, 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 the boundary of, of the parish and many mountains and, you know, walk around the, the, cor the, the weird corner of, um, of Wyoming a little bit and, and all those kinds of things. But it's also part of that thing of going around to the various kind of far-flung places, think about a more kind of compact, you know, European kind of thing. Also the day when the fields and such are blessed, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of, of, of this week leading up to Thursday. And here we have all kinds of fields and cows, although they're not here today, they're over in the farther one. Um, so things I look forward to, it's very, you know, quaint and agrarian and also really pretty. But those are the things that are happening this week. In the meantime, today is still Sunday. And although my excitement for these things truly knows no bounds, um, we should confine ourselves to what we're doing right now. All right. That being said, also, if you're just joining us, Rachel... Uh, who graduated, you know, last week from university in Washington, D.C., the Catholic University of America, put a special image on her mortar board, you know, the, the square cap the graduates make, and she painted it. So, Rachel, would you show? It's the crest of the diocese. And I think that's brilliant. Excellent, Rachel. And congratulations again for graduating, too. But that's really classy. Nice. All right. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. Regina Celi, letare, alleluia. Quia quemeruisti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit sicutixit, alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia, for the Lord has truly risen, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant, we beseech thee, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. As Ascension is coming up, you know, really just a couple days away, plus or minus. Uh, the time of the Regina Chaley is also coming to its close, but we still have a couple weeks. So we're gonna go through Pentecost and then back to the Angelus. Nice things to do. Anyway, let's do this thing. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Grant almighty God that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading 
from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Paul, Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The readings that we've heard today are readings that we've been hearing kind of, you know, in the last several weeks here on coffee as we go through the daily readings, which are the same, <laughs> kind of put together in a little bit different way. Like we got the whole Council of Jerusalem thing and the Acts of the Apostles and this reading from the gospel. Also, we've had it in the last several days, like we've talked about, for example, the different kinds of peace, like the peace that the world gives versus the peace that the Lord gives and the interesting differences between them. And <clears throat> so here on coffee, the, the sketch of my homily this weekend, just very, very quickly is, be a good host for the Lord. Be a good host for the Holy Spirit. The Lord is telling us that he is with us now, but he is leaving and the Holy Spirit is coming. As hosts, you know, as people who invite guests or who receive guests, sometimes guests aren't always invited, we are hopefully gracious about it. And we do several things to make our guests feel welcome. Well, we also in a really real way do that with God. When we go to communion in a real way, we are receiving. Um, it's kind of a funny thing. The word host is used in a different sense in this case, but we're, we're, we are the host really. You know, the, the host is coming to us in this case to use the, the word that we use about, for example, communion. But Jesus is coming to us and how we receive him is very important. That preparation that we make to receive him is important and how he is with us is important and so on. And obviously also the same with the Holy Spirit. All of these things are true. And I can go on for hours and hours about that, which is kind of you know how these things kind of often work on Sunday in, uh, in church. Sorry about that. But still the point being is it's a matter of reception. Now, in order to receive the Lord well, not just communion or not just the Holy Spirit and not just confirmation in the Holy Spirit, but generally the Holy Spirit, to receive God well into our hearts, there are a couple things that have to be well established. First of all, like how we receive is one of preparation and sure how we actually, you know, deal with the guest as it were and <clears throat> appreciate them and so on. And there's this wonderful phrase in the gospel today about if you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, which is also an interesting thing that, um, again, very much like real normal guests, there's this allegory kind of extends to this as well. When guests leave to go visit others, this can be a point of great joy, especially if those other people are, you know, people that we also like. Imagine that kind of wonderful experience of someone who has the great benefit of having like a whole summer to go around and visit people. And let's say this person is coming to visit you and then going to visit like your best friend. Oh, please tell them, please take this to them. Please offer my regards. That's kind of exactly what the Lord is saying when he says, if you loved me, you'd rejoice that I'm going to the father. Ah, and in this way, we as the host here can also send to the father is this beautifully trinitarian thing going on in which not just like you know the father and the son and the holy spirit bound in love and so on but also us ourselves part of what's called the interior trinity the imminent trinity the trinity itself and not just as like kind of you know way out there kind of trinity the transcendent trinity, that's, that's the fancy word for that, but the, the close part of being kind of in the midst of those relationships of the trinity, and not just as an observer, but as a participant in how that love is actually, you know, lived out. 
It's a cool little thing. Now, another very interesting part of this, and I think it really is worth talking about, uh, again, kind of drawing this idea of what peace is together along with the rest of this kind of interesting um, kind of hospitality reading of the gospel today is the nature of justice. So while we're in the kind of relationship of the Trinity and while we're also talking about the nature of discipline in the church, like the, the Council of Jerusalem thing, or talking about pilgrimage. Remember how I talked about pilgrimage for the Council of Jerusalem? Well, now we have like this other pilgrimage going on of the Lord going to the Father. It's called the Ascension and, and so on. Um, one of the places where these things all connect, peace, pilgrimage, Ascension, Holy Spirit, Pentecost, Trinity, is the idea of justice and what justice is. So when we think of justice, again, this is really kind of strongly in that idea of the peace conversation that we had a couple of days ago, uh, we usually think about it from me to you, you know, among people, great. But in the Catholic sense, in, in the sense that is, you know, really informed by the presence of God and not merely his existence, justice has kind of four coordinates, all of which have to be you know, kept in their right relationship. So it's, it's a little bit more dimensional than we're used to. And let me explain. So those four things, obviously a justice in relationship of self to God. That particular thing is called religion, but it's also really a relationship. It's how the, these two parties, very special parties are, established to each other and how the kind of the honor mutually is happening. And of course, that's the same for justice and relationship and all, all kinds of other things, but this is an important one, a rather important one, uh, speci specifically with worship. And also like the reason why we worship and give thanks and, you know, all the other things that, you know, religion should be doing within us, you know, is because ultimately God loves us first. So that rapport is important. We kind of understand that one, not usually as justice, but hold on a second, that's kind of the first one. The second one is a little bit surprising and I think a very important one and not to be overlooked. This is very important, which is the relationship to self, self-awareness, self-understanding, uh, the clarity of the knowledge of one's own self in the ancient world, this is of course like the famous Delphi Oracle thing of this is what is should, what should be there together. Um, that if you know yourself, this is the most important thing. It's like the source of all wisdom in the ancient world. If you're going to the Oracle at Delphi, um, she's gonna tell you some interesting things after breathing the interesting you know, fumes that are coming out, but ultimately it doesn't really matter unless you know yourself and you probably, then don't need her help. Anyway, so then comes the third one, another kind of obvious one, which is relationship with others, the justice in the normal sense that we usually think of. Again, that rapport. And then the fourth one, and this is interesting. Well, with the world at large, and that's not just with like, with everyone, but also frankly, with nature. One of the things, which we often forget about is that nature always wins in, in the sense of the world around us. If there is going to be a giant snowstorm, it's not going to conveniently not snow on our driveway. It's going to absolutely snow on our driveway and we have to be able to deal with that. And we can expand this out to all the other things too. And sometimes it can be quite brutal and harsh but there's also a point here, which is that injustice in a right relationship with the world also is not just preparing ourselves well for whatever may happen, but to accept it with a, a, a certain amount, not just of stoicism, but with an actual appreciation for it. So I know it's kind of goofy. I look out the window, I say like, hey, the sky is clear today. 
the high will be in the 50s, you know, give my little weather report in the morning. It's, I, I do that not just because it's kind of, you know, kitschy and fun and it's coffee and we can do silly things, but also because it's a recognition of the world outside around us, which is really quite beautiful. And in this way, I think we can recuperate, frankly, a very fine Christian ecology because now we're putting it into the right configuration of this interesting little kind of four pointed thing. It's like a little cross, you know, uh, of a right relationship with God also means a right relationship with yourself, also means a right relationship with others, also means a right relationship with the world and its breadth. When it comes to justice, we usually don't think of that. Justice is a very important theme, especially for the image of the heavenly Jerusalem that we've been reading about now a couple of weeks in this reading from Revelation. The heavenly Jerusalem, where the Lord himself gives glory and the sun has no need and the 12 courses of stones are named with the apostles and all the rest of them. The reason why Jerusalem in the heavenly sense exists is as a place where all of those relationships are well established. I mean, we're talking about an image of heaven here. And so, yeah, kind of by definition, all of those relationships are going to be working well. They're going to be running without any hiccups. Now, coming back to this idea of being a good host for God, especially the word, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, the word. And as we have been reading through the rest of this pericope, we know that that's exactly what Jesus is talking about, the word himself, and also the Holy Spirit who comes, the comforter, implies that in order for us to have that relationship with the Lord, especially the Holy Spirit, but also with Jesus, the word that we must hold on to, that therefore those other relationships are also going to be in their coordinate goodness. All of them have to be together. Um, and we also know that if, if you know, let's, let's look at the opposite of this, that if one of these things is at the detriment of the others, we have a word for that, it's hypocrisy, um, that is not particularly good for our moral well-being. That, and, and this is of course a very tricky thing now because especially that justice like we normally think about the third category with others is often, mm, it's not great. But we have to always have that good faith to try our best to put that in its coordinate place. And for those of us who are, you know, faithful people, we go, we are, we are churchy people, we go to church. Uh, we obviously are working on that first one with God. And that's an important thing to keep in mind, sure, but not to the detriment of the others, because that would be kind of silly. So like I said before we started, I'm, I'm thinking about this right now also because these are the rogation days this week, which I, I realize is kind of like, this is esoteric. This is kind of weird. Of course, I put it in the calendar. Of course, it's in the same <laughs> Because how could it not be? I mean, we're surrounded by all this, you know, great stuff. The, the world is beautiful out there. The mountains are marvelous. The, the fields are glorious. And it's, it is fun to have the cows and all of that. And having that relationship also with like the world in general is tremendously important. You'd have to be kind of very poorly off if you didn't love the natural surroundings that we have, which are glorious. It's one part. And of course, all of these things, you know, the right relationship with God, the right relationship with others, the right relationship with the world generally, don't forget about that relationship with yourself. That's also a critical one. How self-knowledge is so useful and not just because like, you know, then things work better in life, but it's really kind of there where the well-being and joy of the other things kind of gets to have its own fruition, its fulfillment, its flourishing. We, especially when talking about theology, we often kind of neglect our own anthropology. It shouldn't be that way. That's always a part of it. This is the, like, again, why I kind of like the coffee part and realizing that coffee is a good thing in life. 
because <clears throat> especially at this hour of the day we were waking up and it's lovely <laughs> i mean it, it may sound very frou-frou and silly but it's not the the basic things have to be respected ourselves we must respect ourselves and all of these things really are coordinate we often talk about them one at a time but they're never separate they're always together and as we welcome the word and as we welcome the holy spirit these things also have to be there think of the analogy of being a host when you have something in your life for example in your home that is a little bit out of order it is incredibly infuriating it is excruciating to try to like hide it bracket it off to make sure that the guests don't see it's much nicer to be the host who is fully welcoming and doesn't have to have those little bits and pieces that are off limits that when they are discovered then you know bad things happen i think we've all been there still it, it is a um, really important thing to remember that these four things go together and since we've been here on coffee talking about these things especially like the peace that the lord gives obviously it's in the relationship also of justice of how that justice coordinates to those other parts together anyway that's what i wanted to share with you on coffee today cool as we always do let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the lord that he will hear and answer us For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar, and for all bishops, that through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary, they will be protected from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may overcome all adversity and grow ever deeper in relationship with our Redeemer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that, that in this springtime, we give thanks to God for all of his creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that there be peace among all nations, especially in Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Sandy asks us to pray for a special intention for her nephew, Kyle, who is struggling. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Michelle asks us to pray for her friend, Andrew, who was ordained as a transitional deacon in the Diocese of Greensburg yesterday. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And Linda asks us to pray for our seminarians, Anthony and Brian, and soon to be Michael, that the Blessed Mother keep them close to her and the Holy Spirit guide each step in their journey. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer gathering all our prayers into one. Let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal time, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Linda asked in the chat, why can't we do both? I mean, I think you're talking about ascension. And, you know, maybe, depends on time. Not made of time. Anyway, we'll see. <clears throat> In the meantime, always check the liturgy calendar. You never know what might pop up. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. 
and by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints. In mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and the Church, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Great, good times, happy Sunday. All right, time to get things rolling over here. God bless you all. See you tomorrow. Be well. Bye-bye.